Yes, so this is now recording as well. And this will be uploaded uh, probably tomorrow morning or something like that. Um, yeah, so this is the last session in terms of Palladium modules, really. Uh, tomorrow is Power BI, which I recommend everyone attending. It's a very powerful product. It's a great reporting tool. And then on Friday, I think my colleague Anthony will be doing what's new in version 10. And I think that's it. And there will be a, next, a new cycle starting again probably in two weeks' time, covering the same modules again. Okay, so let's crack on. So, so we're going to be basically focused on this section, and we'll be bouncing between the doing sales orders and how to generate pick tickets, etc. So usually where I start is we're going to go into the company options, and let's see what settings there are for for this module. So we have the warehouse module here, the icon, and so there's not too much in here. So we have some basic settings here. So we've got so if we use serial and lot numbers, if we click here, then it will print. It will show those numbers on the pick ticket that's printed. Now we can auto assign, so you don't have to do it manually. Auto issue pick tickets. So that means every time you do a sales order, it will automatically generate a pick ticket. So I'll show you the workflow and where this will come into play. And again, auto pick ticket, print pick tickets. So if you if you issue pick tickets for every sales order and you want them all printed, then I recommend you just might as well click these two. It'll save you some processing time. But because I'm going to go through all the steps one by one, I'm going to untick these. And then also here, a new feature on Vision 10, we have pick ticket by location. So I'm going to activate this. So all this does is if we have a sales order, I'm going to show in in practice as well, but if we have a sales order which has two line items, let's say, and line item one is coming from warehouse A and the low line items from warehouse B. So it'll just come, it'll just split the pick ticket accordingly. So when we print the pick ticket, it'll only print pick half the print half the pick ticket in location A and half in location B, showing only the relevant items there. So I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to take that option and we're going to Click OK and proceed. Um, also, so we're going to treat these quite separately, really. So the workflow we're going to be doing is we'll start with a sales order. And then the next stage is we do a pick ticket. So we issue it. And then we're going to print the pick ticket. And then we're going to apply what's actually been picked in the warehouse into this section here. And then we come back into accounts receivable and we convert the sales order, and it will let us know that a pick, that a pick ticket's been done, the stock pick, and it will, it will tell us if there's been a discrepancy, what was in the sales order and what's actually been picked. But we'll go through all that. Uh, so, so most companies I've been at, that's where it stops, really. They don't use the shipments. But this is an extension that is available, so this comes after the invoicing. So this is more on your delivery side of things, and we'll go through that as well. So I'm going to first start off with the pick tickets, and then we'll come on to that side of things and the, the basic setup here. All this setup is only relevant to the shipping here. So we'll go through the pick ticket process first. So like I was saying, let's go and create a sales order. I'm just going to minimize the chat. It does give me notifications if there is a message though. So I'm just going to do create a customer, user customer, and inventory item, let's say 10 of these. And five rand. Always worth keeping in mind. You can see I can uh, change the price and apply discounts, but that's all dependent on user rights. So yeah, you know, we'll just keep it simple at this stage. So I'm going to click record, and this is sales order four. So the next stage is so you have your normally your invoicing people who do the sales side of things. They'll capture that information, and then they need to go and issue a pick ticket and have it printed in the warehouse for the guys to actually go physically pick this, the stock. So then you go to the warehouse module, and we go to the pick tickets icon. So here are some sales orders I've captured before I started this session, but here's the one we just did now. So I'm just gonna tick this one, and all that's doing is it's creating a pick ticket on the system. So do you wish to issue pick tickets to all selected documents? Yes, I do. So now the next stage is to go and print the pick ticket. So we just come in here and 
So this is the second one. So sales order four, it's this one here, and then you just press print. So a batch list report is a, a, an optional extra thing that you can print. So all it is really, so if we have loads of pick tickets available, I can select them all. And when I press print, uh, it'll print out the pick tickets, but also print out another uh, form that shows us which pick tickets are done. Basically a list, almost like what you see on this screen. But I'm just going to say no. And at this point, uh, based on, uh, since pick tickets being not active at this time, okay, I just want to do the one sales order. Let's correct that one off. I didn't check the last message then. Did it print the pick ticket? Okay, so the first one I printed then, because I clicked two, there's one was linked to multiple locations, which I, I want to demonstrate separately. Yeah, this is the one I did. So it did print out the pick ticket there. I can actually hear it printing. So I just want to grab it and I'll put it on the webcam just to show you what it looks like. Uh, if you can just hang on. Okay, I haven't tried the webcam before, but this is all what it looks like is basically this. So you can see it has the fields for quantity, and then it has an additional column on the right-hand side, which shows the actual picked items. So this is what's going to print. So just asking if I can go closer. Yeah. So you can see everything there. So it has that blank extra field there for picked. So when it goes physically to the warehouse, they'll just put in the actual amount that's been picked. So they put that in manually, they write it down. So for our example, let's say they come back and they picked five. So when they return that, that document, we then just go to stock pick. And we're going to load that pick ticket, which is this one here. So this, this column shows us the ordered quantity as per the sales order. So in my example, I was saying they put in five on that form, so they put in, we'll put in five here. So only five has been picked. So then we can record it. And you can, you can preview this document as well. It's not usually used, but it just shows you a printout, so quantity, quantity picked. Uh, anything else worth showing you on this screen before I go show you its functionality on the invoicing? So you have a section for notes, etc. Like in all other processing areas, you can attach files, we can adjust the document. You can see which user captured it, etc. So now the next stage is usually, so then we go on to the invoicing. So we go back into accounts receivable, click on here, and we'll convert. So if you don't use the pick tickets usually, they'll see there's a new message that you're probably not too familiar with. But if you do use pick tickets, you'll be familiar with this message now. So this message that comes up, the following pick tickets are available for a sales order. Would you like to compare them against the sales order now? So it just lets us know the entry dates and the pick dates. So it's all in the same day on my system data, so I just don't even go now. And have they been picked? So we just select yes, and then it compares the results. So pick ticket, only five have been picked, and as per the sales order, there's a 10. So it's letting us know there's a back order of five at this stage. So once I press done, it automatically populates this field of five. And we can record. So for whatever reason that we didn't uh, pick the full 10, we can go back and complete that order as well. So if I go back to that sales order, I'm just going to click back, so that's the last one I did. You can see there's an open quantity of five there. So like I was saying, like for whatever reason we didn't do it the first time, and maybe it's because we didn't have stock or something like that, and now we do the next day, we can just simply go back to the warehousing, pick tickets, and you'll see it still exists here. So if we fully invoiced it as per the sales order, we wouldn't be able to issue the pick tickets still. So I'm just going to go through it again so you can see we issued five. There's five remaining down here. So we can go through the same process again here now. Issue pick ticket. 
and we're going to print it. Print selected, We've include a batch list report. Let's not. And do you wish to set all selected documents as printed? Yes. So I'm just waiting to see if it prints again. I'll just show you how it's changed the figures on there. I can hear printing, so just give me. Okay, the Paul who's sitting in with the training is just going to go fetch it. Because you can't preview the pick tickets. You print it in the warehouse or wherever it would go. Thank you, Paul. So, I mean, there's not too much to show you, but basically, the, remember the sales order had a quantity of 10, whereas now, because there's only a remaining quantity of 5, that's what's showing on the pick ticket. And, I mean, this pick ticket can be customized as well. I know some clients like us to add, like, a section at the bottom for signature, so whoever in the warehouse actually picked the stock, so someone's accountable for it. So you can add something like that if you wanted it. So, yeah, they come back and they fill that in. Then we go and complete it. And so it's pick ticket three now. We've got a five. We're going to record it. And we can go and complete that order. So we go back into sales invoicing. Convert. And here it is. And again, it gives us this message. And this time, our open quantity on our order is five. And we're, we're matching it entirely. There's no difference. So now there's no back order on the sales order. So that's all there is really to it. I just want to show you the, the split, how it works when you split the location on the sales order. So some of this will be repetitive, but I just want to show you that as well and how it's different. So let's do another customer. I think I might create another item for the example as well. So let's do 20 here, five round and a default location. If you don't mind, I'm just going to create another item quickly. Item X, item X. And click OK. What am I missing? Let me go check it here. Let me check in the master file. Make sure the location is different. No, I will do. Yeah. I just couldn't see the item there. Here it is. Thanks, Michael, and welcome. Thank you. Well, I'm missing. Why is that the item not showing? Maybe we're witnessing some troubleshooting on the spot. Let's have a quick look. If I missed something, category, where else? Daddy does it. I'm just going to create another item. I'm not sure if it's because I did it on the, the sales order directly, but it shouldn't make a difference. Oh, it's, it's showing now. Anyway, so let's get back to that. So sales order, select our customer. Uh, inventory A, 10 of those. Five round and let's do it. A say twenty of these. Twelve round and then we just see if it's at different locations. So you might be using two locations. Maybe you don't have this stock in one warehouse, but it's available in the other one. And we can record this now. So the only difference is when we now we go to the warehousing. I go to pick tickets. You can see here where it says location. It tells you there's multiple locations there. So you can issue selected. And again, we can go and print it. Uh, pick ticket for So you can see it's split it here by location. So it's the same customer, same sales order number, but it's generated two pick tickets. So it's going to split the lines per location per pick ticket. So to determine where it prints to, uh, you need to go to the form setup, which you might be quite familiar with. 
So the, let me just go back to make, remind you of that setting because that setting is imperative. So if I just come back in here, warehousing, we've got this activated here, only available for local print caching. So when you go to form setup, we have got a local uh, somewhere in here, warehouse documents, pick tickets. Uh, where was it here? Warehousing. Warehouse printers. So pick ticket by location. So you can see here, you can choose your printers based on your location. So then it knows where to print to. When you press print pick ticket, it'll print based on this setting here. Because, I mean, they're going to have to do a physical picking, so it has to go to the right warehouse. So you have to make sure this is all set up correctly as you'd want it. So, I mean, that's the only difference, really, in terms of that. So I can go through the same process, do my stock pick, what's actually been picked, and then convert to an invoice. So that's the only difference in terms of that functionality. Uh, before I go on to shipments, I don't know if there's any questions or want me to go over anything. Uh, Michael, let's have a look at your question. Uh, hi, Karen. Sorry, I missed your question. So look, hi, I just want to confirm that this session has been recorded, as I've definitely can't log on right now. Uh, yes, Karen, uh, I almost forgot, but someone did remind me, so it is being recorded, Karen. Uh, and Michael, good morning. Um, will picked items from the two different locations end up on the same invoice? Yes, they will. So you can, yes, absolutely. Assume that they're correlated. Uh, I can go through that if you wish. So let's just go through the process anyway. Uh, inventory. I think I issued the pick ticket, so let's go load them. So we've got four and five. So we have to do them separately here. So we can put eight here, and press yes, and we'll load our next one. We'll just leave this one at 20. So this is two different locations. We go back to our sales invoice, convert. Sales order five, and it gives us this message. So it shows us here that there's two different pick tickets. And the variance is here as well. And it pulls the information through here. So it's, it works exactly the same, really. No, it's fantastic. Eh? A lot of clients don't know it's there as well. It's very good. Um, yeah, before I move on to the shipment side of things, any anything, any other questions there? Good, okay, we'll, we'll have time for questions later anyway, so I'm just going to progress on to shipments now. So... You can all, almost ignore the top half now. So we're going to look at shipping, which is it comes after the invoicing stage. So it's just, and a, a lot of clients will ask us, like when you do a sales invoice, uh, you'll see you're able to print out a delivery note, which you can hand to the client once it's been delivered. So a lot of clients ask us, what's the difference between a delivery note and the shipments or whatnot? Well, the, the shipments is just for internal use, really. It's not something that you, you might give to the client. So it's information you're going to give to your driver, um, information so you know what's in what container, etc., etc., type of thing. So it's more for internal use. There's no implications on stock or anything like that. So there is a bit of setup here. So I'm just going to go through the setup. So let's set up our delivery driver. And we can put a code in for them. Uh, I'm just going to call it Nishan. And so you can attach files, maybe it's, a, I don't know, a driving license or any other relevant documentation for the driver that you may require. And again, we have optional fields, which can be changed again. Um, not sure of an example or the information you might need. Maybe the, the driver's ID number or something, whatever it may be. You can do whatever you may wish. So we click OK. So we've got our first driver set up. And then vehicles. So it's, this isn't linked to fixed assets in any way. So we're just creating a name for a vehicle, but you can't link it to a fixed asset at all. So let's just call it uh, Hilux. I don't know. Let's just call it a van. Van. 
And the, the same principle, yes, yeah. so we have optional fields. Again, maybe you want to customize one for registration number, maybe when its next service is due, uh, whatever it may be, really. And in files, any documentation, you may want to add on the service plans or add on anything. And there we go, we've got our transport vehicle. And then delivery routes. So delivery route is, so you can link it to customers. So if we do multiple invoices against different customers, but they all have the same delivery route in, at the end of the day, so you can link them on the same shipment. So it's easier for the driver, so it's all put together. So I'll show you how that works. So all it, at this stage, all it is is really a name. So I mean a highway up here in Joburg, or N1 South or whatever. Uh, and then again, optional fields, maybe you want to put an area, maybe GPS coordinates, and then again, maybe it's some, something else here. So I'll show you how that works as well. We've also got a new feature here on version 10 as well, delivery methods. Uh, I think I'm going to leave that to the end because it doesn't really tie in with the rest of this. So all it is, if you do deliveries for your customers and you charge it, you ch or I suppose it is integrated in that way, um, what do you think? Well, I think maybe that's probably the best place to start, in fact. So I'm going to set up a delivery method. So you, if you deliver and you have a cost structure for that, you can determine what the fee is based on various variables. So I'm just going to put delivery cost as my heading, uh, delivery fee, and then we get our code. So our code would be like a service item. You should probably set up a separate service item for delivering. Uh, I don't have one here, so I'm just going to call it a service call. And then your billing method. So this is where we have a list of variables, what you want it to be based on, what you want your delivery fee to be determined by. So if I put distance to client, you can link this to a tax code. So minimum charge. So I mean, it's self-explanatory. You won't... This is your minimum charge. So whatever your matrix we're going to design at the bottom, if it falls below that, at the time of invoicing, doing sales orders, the minimum charge will always be 50 rand, even if we're delivering to another office in the same in the same uh, office park. But you, you can override the charge at the time of processing, but this is where the default is going to come from. So here we have the fixed cost per defined unit. So basically. So I'm doing distance, I'm going to work with kilometers, so I'm saying from one kilometer to 10 kilometers, we're going to charge 70 rand. And then from 11 kilometers to 20 kilometers, the charge is going to be 100 rand. I think you get the gist of it. And then 150 rand. So, if, so we have to, there's a piece of information we have to put in the customer master file so the system knows which one, which fee to apply. So if we're delivering to a customer that's 15 Ks away, it will automatically pull through the delivery charge of 100 rand. So let's go show you what I mean. So let's try and remember one of these numbers. So 100 rand we expect. I'm going to set up a distance of 15 kilometers for a customer. So we click OK. And let's go into a customer master file. And let's select anyone. Let's do Peter. We go to shipping locations. So you have to create a location for the client. Uh, and it's down here where you see distance. So that's where, where the system knows where to, what fee to apply at time of invoicing. So if I put 15 kilometers, select OK. And then when I go do a sales invoice, uh, a new one for Peter. Uh, I can see the delivery cost is zero. That's because I forgot a step. Apologies. So if I go back into settings, we need to link Peter to a delivery method. That's why I wasn't pulling through. But it doesn't actually have to be linked, so that's just if you want to bring a default. So let's go back to the invoicing. And there we go, the delivery cost of 100. 
So because I didn't assign a default, this was on none. But you, you, at the time of processing, so if you have, you have many different uh, delivery fee structures set up, you can change in the time of processing. So that, I mean, that's how that works, really. So not a lot to it. So that's, well, let's do, I'm just going to generate an invoice because we're going to go through the shipment shortly. And um, we'll use this invoice as an example. So let's say 10 of these ones and 20 of that. Let me record. Let's put a selling price. I don't like it when there's no selling price. So that, that's the delivery method. So I mean, there's some other variables here as well. Uh, you can see, so you can do it based on total mass. Uh, so a new feature on version 10, you can assign item weights in the inventory master file. So if I just change it to there, it's basically the same principle we can do from one to 10 kilograms, whatever it may be. Uh, also volumetric weights, distance decline, number of ordered, uh, units ordered, or you can just have a fixed rate, which is just a flat rate. So you put in that here. So no matter how far they are, no matter the weight of the order, it's going to cost 200 rounds to deliver that unit, that, that delivery. Uh, the other thing probably worth explaining on here, the only other difference is this setting here. So this is fixed cost per unit mass, and this one's per, I keep forgetting, it's not like cover off, and let's just go in here. And uh, putting these prices. Yeah, yeah so I'm just popping in the field, I'll get my calculator out because I'm probably going to need it. So the way it calculates with this option ticked here, so we're looking at distance still. So before we said if a client is 15 kilometers away, they just fall within this this bracket here, so it'll be 70 rand. However, if this is ticked, it's actually different. It's the actual distance. It'll still look at the same bracket, so it's 15 kilometers, still at this bracket, but we multiply it by the, this column here. So the delivery cost will actually be that much. So there's a, there's a big difference between the two settings there. Uh, again, we have optional fields, files, etc., etc. So that, that's how the delivery methods work. So we've done our invoice now. We've set up our delivery routes and delivery vehicles and delivery drivers. Uh, and then, then you move on to shipments. So shipment inquiries will just list all your outstanding shipments that are open at the moment. At the moment, it's blank. I haven't got any data on here. So it works in the same way as like accounts inquiries, vendor inquiries, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So our first stage is to do a shipment, and then shipment containers, and then there's two options here just to print that information. So not not, not a lot to it. Um, so you come in here, you load your invoice. So you can select your customer. Uh, we can select Peter. And all his invoices come up here. And it breaks down per line as well. So you can also search by delivery route. So I think I'm actually going to demonstrate that as well because it ties into it. It's quite useful. So we've got N1 South. Let's go link that to our customers. So let's do drone B. Uh, shipping location. And I'm just going to put... And delivery method we're not going to use here, so we do a distance. Oh, that doesn't matter. What am I looking for? Delivery route is what I'm looking for. So that's the delivery route that we just set up. So that's for one customer. If you can just remember, so Jerome Brown and let's do Gary College. So now I'm just going to do a couple of quick invoices for those two customers. Yeah, we'll put a quantity of 15 here. And record. And the other one was Gary College.
I probably should have done these invoices before we start, but anyway, you can watch through it. So we've got our two orders there. Let's add another extra line item on this one. Five Durant. Okay. So if we go back to the warehousing now, you can actually ship, so we can load our invoices. Instead of searching by customer, we can go here, and you can see the invoices that we've done here. So you can combine them on one. So you can search by location. So the way I see, because I know when I start, these two icons confuse me a bit. We have shipments and shipment containers. So your shipments is almost like when you order something from take a lot, uh, you have your own little box with the items you selected. So it, it makes sense that the system doesn't allow me to combine my order and this order together or give me a warning message. Individual shipments need to be created per customer. So that individual package you get isn't going to have a mix of two customers. That's your package. And the second section is the container. So you can put multiple packages in there. So I can have Mike's order in there, my order, Nishan's order in there. It's going to go in the same delivery, the same maybe the van or whatever your container is, if I'm making sense. So I'll just go through it. So I'm going to do it to my delivery route, and I'm going to do this one first. So I'm going to combine his two line items. So it pulls through, it pulls through all this information as per the invoice, as our ship quantity. We can select all our vehicles here, so which one it's going to go with, which driver, say Nishan. Uh, you can select what type of box it is, so we'll just play this as a box with our order in it. Uh, shipment information there, so it pulls through the document weight, so our inventory items don't have an assigned weight, so it would pull through here automatically. Uh, I can show you where to set that up and where it pulls through. Uh, we have our tracking number and our waybill number, and we have some space for sale uh, for notes. Uh, so you see, you know when you do a delivery, when you order something from Take a Lot, sometimes they ask for delivery instructions or something like that. You might put that in here, it's just so the driver knows exactly. So we can record that, and that's our first ship we've done. And this is the packing slip. It tells you what it contains. So I'm just going to do that again for the other one we had outstanding with the same sales route. Uh, so we'll do it for this other customer. Uh, I'm going to populate the same information, same van, same driver, and we'll say this is also a box. So now we've got them two individual packages with those two customers' orders, and we can print the pack packing slip here in bulk, so that's if we have multiple, so I've done the two, so I can print them here, or we could do it where we did it in here, actually in the shipment screen. So this works in the same way as print batches work, see if you want to print all the invoices in bulk. Uh, same with vendor invoices, where else is the one? Label printing. So it just allows you bulk print, basically. So the next stage is we're going to put all those, all those packages into one container, getting ready for the delivery. So here we can now load, uh, Michael, let's have a look at your question. Based on this information, will the system provide the load sequence for the truck? I furthest client on route should be loaded first. Yes. Closest, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Not something I've thought about. Um, mm, I'm trying to think how the system cater for that. Uh, no, I can't think of a way. I wonder. I'm trying to think of it as a workaround way. There isn't a, an obvious way of doing it. Um, I mean, let's use the optional fields. Can we use distance from warehouse in reverse order? Uh, that's a clever way of looking at it. Um, that distance of clients is only related to the delivery costs. So, uh, let me just have a nosy in here. Yeah, the only thing I can think of is if you put it in the notes and you put that type of information there. And then when you print all the packing slips, then they would have to look at the notes provided. So if you're just going to use distance, I don't know if that's sufficient. But it would mean duplication of work. It's not pulling through from the other area. But it makes sense. I understand where you're coming from. 
So if I go to, uh, like I've mentioned a few other days, if you do have suggestions, just send it through to Palladium, because I can see the value in that. Well, only very sophisticated loads can do this. Yeah, it, it seems like it could be applied there, since we've got the delivery methods there with the distance declined. So it's, I mean, it seems like it's something we could be capable of a little bit of development. Uh, wish list is Palladium is just the email address. I know I've mentioned it almost every day, but I know everyone's not been here. Uh, I agree with you, Michael, I do. You just need to convince Stephen or MD who, who gets the emails at wishlist.palladium.coza. Uh, what? Uh, yeah, so Paul who's sitting with one of our resellers, what about the delivery routes? So the delivery routes is, yeah, it just tells you an area of where you're going. It doesn't, you can't separate them. <laughs> true, Michael, true. You've got to go through three routes. Yeah. In that box there, it the land, yeah. um, three different areas. Yeah, but the routes on this don't specify it like that. It's one general route, so it includes them. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go to my shipment containers now. We're going to load all those packages. So I'll just come in here. And so now again, we can do it per customer or per delivery route. So if you want to put all these packages together based on route, we're going to select our route here. And you can see we've got our two shipments here, shipment one and shipment two. And we know these are linked to different customers. So I'm going to load them here. So in this one shipment, uh, so you can't do this anywhere else. And like you can't do a purchase invoice for two different uh, vendors and two different sales invoices for two different customers, obviously. But here you'll see, so line one belongs to Gary College, and shipment two is for Jerome Brown. So you can see how it changes the information there. So there's two different customers on the same shipment. And it's pulled through all this information here, the van, Nishan's our driver, and we can say it's a container. And it pulls through this information from our documents before, so it'll be a total weight. Again, container notes. Uh, touch, we're going to touch files. Yeah, so that, so we can record the transaction, and then this is the manifest that's printed out for the driver. So you can see what information's on here: the vehicle, driver, invoice quantity. So it has the it has the unique. Uh, the addresses for both deliveries as well. Yeah. So I mean that pretty much sums up the warehousing module. Actually, it's it's quite a quick module. Uh, is, is there any questions on any of that? Anything you'd like me to re go over? Any uh, like Michael? Is anything you're wondering it's capable of? Perhaps I haven't uh, not considered. Great, Michael, thanks. It's quite a straightforward module, but um, from my time in support, I can see it's quite underutilized, really. I don't think everyone's uh, aware of its functionality. Thanks, Brent. Thanks for coming again. Yeah, so it's a pretty short session. So, I mean, thanks, Keith. I hope it was helpful to you. I hope you picked up something. I know you're quite experienced with Palladium. Uh, so this is going to be my last session personally. So I know I've covered a few modules. So I don't know if those who attended have any questions about other modules maybe that I covered. So I'm just going to stop recording this session now on the warehousing. It will be uploaded.